Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to talk about the Dell PowerEdge R520 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on SSDs. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R520 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, this video is going to be specifically focused on solid state drives for your R520 server. All right, so here's what we're gonna do in this video as a whole. We're gonna go over the different types of compatible solid state drives for your R520 server. We're gonna go over the different max speeds, the max sizes. We're gonna physically install one, which is super easy because it's a hot swap drive. Then we're gonna show you how to use two tools, HD Sentinel and Dell Diagnostics. Now, Dell Diagnostics, I love because it'll test everything in your system, not just the drives. And it's just a, a great a great tool and it's very easy to use. And we'll show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to use that. And then HD Sentinel is a great, just secondary tool that we like to use. We'll hook a storage array up to our server and we will plug in drive standalone before we ever put them into a live production environment and it'll tell us the health scores, it'll tell us the power on hours, so this can ensure that a drive is new as well. So it's just, a, again, a great secondary tool that we highly recommend and hopefully you find that helpful at home. So all right, well, let's hop into the compatible types. You have SAS solid state drives and you have SATA solid state drives and there's some advantages to both. With SAS, you're going to have a faster speed. You can get 6 gigabit per second, where with SATA, you only get 3 gigabit per second second, so that's a definite huge advantage for SAS, but on the flip side, SATA costs less, so uh, that's the advantage for SATA, and if you're at home and you don't need a faster speed and you're sitting here trying to debate uh, which way do I go, well, SATA is the way to go. It's cheaper, right? Well, the uh, on the SAS side, it's faster, but you pay for it, all right? Now, on the max sizes, well, it's the same for SAS and SATA. You get 7.68 terabytes per drive slot, which is pretty good storage overall. I will say the nice thing about uh, the 520s is that you can, you know, it's a large form factor chassis, so you can shove in some really cheap large form factor hard drives, your 16 terabytes, your 18 terabytes, those kind of drives are gonna be uh, cheaper on a price per terabyte compared to solid state drives, but they're more likely to fail. Uh, they're gonna not perform as well. I mean, solid state drives are much, much faster. And people ask us all the, all the time, like, hey, we're trying to extend the life of our 520. We wanna just use it for a few more years. We don't wanna have to go, you know, buy a 10, 20 grand brand new server. You know, what do you recommend to extend the life? Well, we always tell people upgrade your RAM and upgrade, your so upgrade to solid state drives, especially if you're on hard drives. And this will be a just huge boost in performance overall and just give you a couple more years out of your 520, okay? All right, well, now that we know a little bit more about the uh, speeds, the sizes, the compatibilities, let's show you how to actually install one, and then we'll show you how to do Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel. All right, having my ESD gear on, safe to open the machine. So uh, first things first, this is gonna be a really easy upgrade, as we said. So if you wanna remove your old drive, the red circle, you're just gonna push it, your latch is gonna pop open for your tray. You're gonna just pull it out. It's a very simple installation. You're gonna take your new drive and notice that your SSDs are, are gonna be 2.5 inch, but you will need to have a 3.5 inch tray with the adapter or converter. We sell it as a complete kit on our website, so you don't have to worry about the headache. Uh, and you're just gonna open it up, and you're gonna slide this in, and it slides in nice and easy. You push it in. Clip it. It's a, again a very very easy installation and definitely something that's going to help boost your overall performance for your R520. And now we're going to show you how to actually test your SSDs or your drives for that matter with Dell Diagnostics. Hey guys, it's been with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to test your hard drives with Dell Diagnostics. And technically, it's going to cover more than just hard drives. It'll test your whole system and other components such as your CPUs, your memory, your NIC, the fans, video cards, and much, much more. But like I said, you can also test your hard drives with this, and it's actually a pretty good way to test them, um, and it's a great way to see if there's issues with those drives. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you wanna go ahead and do is boot up your server, and during post, you wanna go ahead and press F10 so you can enter the lifecycle controller. Once you're in the lifecycle controller, you want to navigate to the hardware diagnostics tab on the left side, and then you want to press run hardware diagnostics. And you may get a little warning screen, but you just want to go ahead and press yes. And it'll take a little bit of a second to load, but this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. So immediately, whenever we load into Dell Diagnostics, there is a lot of information that pops up. As you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, it shows everything that's going to be tested. On the right-hand side of the screen, there's lots of information about the test itself. Um, you can also navigate to the results and different configurations and also the event log. 
One thing I do want to mention about Dell Diagnostics is that some of you out there, when trying to run the hardware diagnostics, you may get an issue or you may get a warning about the firmware not being supported or the onboard diagnostics not being supported. And in that case, you want to go ahead and you can either do this in Lifecycle Controller itself or you can do it in iDRAC, but you just wanna go ahead and update that firmware. And we actually have a video later on in the series that covers mass updates. And one of the things that's in those updates is the onboard diagnostics firmware. So stay tuned for that, and that'll give you all that information you need. And like I said, you can also do this through iDRAC as well. So other than that, there's not really much to say about these tests. You just kind of let it run, and this can this can take a while. It can take you know maybe a low end of 20 minutes, up to maybe even an hour, especially if you have more memory in your system. Um, it's going to take a while to test all of that. Um, the more drives you have, that might add some time to it. So it really just depends on your system's configuration. But we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, if it has any issues, it'll show you that that test failed. Uh, but if it has a check next to the test, like it does on the left-hand side for all of our items here, then that means the test was successful and there's no need to worry about it. So like I said, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward. All right, so we have finally reached the end of our test. And at the end of the test, we can go to the results tab that's in the middle of the screen, and we can go ahead and scroll through all the different messages. You can also view the event log, so that's pretty helpful. But if you go to the results, you can see a more in-depth information about the test that you just ran. So there's something very specific. It's a great place to look. But overall, that's Dell Diagnostics. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's easy to access. Like I said, you may have that one issue where you may have to update the onboard diagnostics firmware. Uh, but other than that, once you do that, you shouldn't have any issues. All you got to do is navigate to the hardware diagnostics and just let the test run. You can let these run and then just go off, do something else and come back 10, 20 minutes later. Um, and it's a pretty easy way to one, test all of the drives in your system and make sure they're properly functioning, but it's also a great way to test all of the other components in your system. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now, and as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool. But as you can see, we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. And like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have a 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%. So all pretty good. So I hope you guys found this video useful. And if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom built server or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock. So you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.